Today I want to talk to you about a new technology called WMAS. Now, how did we get here? Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is where WMAS comes from, why we need it. So if you look at this slide, back in 1997, we had 330 megahertz available to us to operate wireless systems in. Uh, some of you might remember in 08, the first spectrum sell-off where we lost 33% of our spectrum. Then the last sell-off in 2017, we lost 58% of our spectrum. So it's important to understand that spectrum for wireless is getting smaller and smaller. Now, when we take a look at what spectrum we have available to us today, there's a couple of scans here uh, on this slide that give you an idea of how bad it can get, right? Um, I mean, specifically looking at places like Phoenix um, with the Super Bowl, they had two channels of wireless available to them, two TV channels, six megahertz spectrums, uh, slices of the spectrum available to them. Uh, Chicago's even worse with one. Uh, here in Dallas, where we are, it's pretty bad as well. So you can see how spectral efficiency is very, very, very important. Now, what did we do to get to where we are as far as wireless microphone technology? Well, first wireless microphone was the Vagabond, and you can see a picture of it right there. Uh, there's actually tubes uh, in the handheld there, and uh, funny story, couldn't hold it for very long, got too hot. Uh, but that was an analog system, and we used analog for a lot of years. Then we transitioned into a digital transmission system. You're, it's still using uh, an analog signal, um, the same, uh, well, I should say, the same RF signal. It's just a digital signal instead of the, uh, the full analog system uh, for transmission, which means it uses a much smaller amount of space, right? It's what's known as narrowband systems. Now, moving forward, we're moving into a combination of digital wideband and narrowband technology. Now, what is WMAS? That stands for Wireless Multi-Channel Audio System, and it's a technology uh, that's, that's neutral, uh, which means that anybody can use it. It's not a product, it's a technology. So it's important to understand that anybody can implement these in uh, basically however they feel uh, is the best way to implement them. But uh, what it allows you to do is use wireless in multiple ways. So you have a management channel uh, going back and forth between them and then audio channels. So for conferencing units, for example, you've got that management channel and then it's bi-directional. So you could have audio going to and coming from the conference units. Uh, you could use it for a talkback system, same thing, that management channel and then back and forth audio. Uh, on a, a body pack uh, in-ear system, uh, that could just be, you know, a, or a body pack transmitter or a handheld transmitter. That could be, you know, one way with that management channels or in-ears, uh, one way as a transmission channel going to the body pack and that management channel. So it allows for all sorts of applications. Now, some of the benefits of WMAS are readily apparent, right? Um, but some of the things you don't really think about. Uh, it, one of the big things is it unlocks innovation for customers. Uh, so new products can come out and operate in ways that current technology just doesn't, right? Um, and we'll get to some of that here in a bit, but uh, it also allows for more efficient use of spectrum. From my earlier slides, uh, you can see as that amount of spectrum that we can use narrows down, it's really important to use that in a really efficient way. It also leverages a scalable architecture, right? So you can scale up or down depending on your needs. And pretty important as well, it's harmonized with those European standards. So whatever you're using here in the US can also be used in uh, the EU. Now, where did WMAS start? Well, it started in the EU. The European Telecommunication Standard Institute came up with this spec. So it's, there's some information here about the technical group that came up with the standards um, that, that uh, WMAS has to hit. Um, but the definition, according to the ETSI, uh, is wireless audio transmission system using digital wideband transmission techniques for microphone, inner system applications, and other multi-channel audio 
PMSE, which is Program Making and Special Events Use. And it also needs to have the ability to support three or more audio channels per megahertz. That's very important. To hit the WMAS spec, you have to have at least three channels of audio per megahertz on there. Let's talk a little bit now about, now that we kind of understand what WMAS is, let's talk about Shure's vision. Uh, remember, like I said, this is a, uh, a technology, not a product. So this is how Shure uh, is, what their vision for WMAS is. One of the key things to this is more efficient use of spectrum. Now, the way that WMAS does this is it, um, the intermodulation products uh, happen within and around the transmitted signal. And you can see that on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side of the, the slide here, the green bars are narrowband devices, and the red bars are intermodulation effects. Now, uh, digital transmission systems for narrowband devices still produce intermodulation effects. They're just drastically lowered, so that allows you to pack in a lot more channels into, uh, into a bit of spectrum there. But what WMAS does is it allows you to put those intermodulation products actually in and around the transmitted signal so you can get a lot more in there. Uh, and again, because the spec says so, it has at least three audio channels per megahertz uh, for RF bandwidth. It's required for the spec. Um, having scalability is very, very important. Um, and I, I think everybody will agree that anytime you're using a new technology, being able to use it in addition to the existing technology is important, right? So RF bandwidth of WMAS uh, scales up or down uh, depending on the channel capacity uh, and available spectrum that you have wherever you're using it. So WMAS bandwidth scaling allows compatible mixed use with existing narrowband channels. So broadcaster, electronic news gathering, live events, people who are already using those narrowband devices can bring in WMAS and use them at the same time. So that was really, really important. So if you look at example number one, there's a six megahertz gap of space there, a, a TV channel size gap. Uh, and you'll see the legacy narrowed band devices there with a WMAS in that, uh, using up three megahertz of space in there. Uh, and in this, uh, assuming five channels uh, per megahertz, there's 15 audio channels right there. Uh, in example number two, using the full six megahertz, that full TV channel, that's 30, or just using two megahertz of, of your spectrum there, you can get 10 audio channels. Again, assuming five channels per megahertz efficiency, which is pretty easy to do with most WMAS devices. So the advantages of what Shure is looking at uh, with WMAS are, again, very easy to see. So easier deployment, um, you're, you're using less frequencies. So you don't have to think about uh, your coordination in terms of a, a ton of frequencies that you have to, to pull from. You can use less frequencies and get more out of it. Um, obviously, higher channel count is uh, is kind of the standard with that. Um, it allows you to use uh, more efficiently use that spectrum and put more channels in there uh, way more than uh, narrowband devices uh, multiple transmission options so it, it means sure really wanted to make sure again that you could use all those legacy devices so analog digital narrowband digital wms uh, devices can all be used on a show uh, and not for nothing, but rack density, uh, a lot of channel counts in a, in a single rack space makes it a lot easier to uh, deploy uh, and uh, a, loss, a lot less weight when you're on tour, that kind of thing. So um, also, sure is known for their reliability. So when you're introducing, uh, when you're talking about a new uh, product, uh, technology sure wanted wants to make sure that uh, that reliability extends to any of this new technology so um, one of the things is being able to have that uh, interference uh, impact limiting that to a sub channel depending on the implementation right so um, not all WMAS implementations look at it this way and, and operate this way. So uh, some of them, you could lose the entire block of all the channels uh, with just a, a few rogue interference carriers. So uh, a few rogue hits could take down all of your channels within that WMAS implementation. So the larger the block, the more target there is for that interference to hit. 
So uh, it was very important for sure to to get that down to a sub channel. Uh, that way it's it's, you know, as reliable as possible. Um, making the coordination easier was very important here. Uh, if you look uh, over to the uh, to the left hand side, uh, you'll see there's PSM 1000s in Phoenix, Arizona, trying to get 20 in-ear channels. Um, there's not a lot of space there, right? Uh, <laughs> so uh, even by calculating that with the more frequencies mode in wireless workbench, only got 14 out of the 20 that were needed. Now, with five carrier frequencies using WMAS, you can easily fit those in there, uh, easily. So this, this gives you an idea of uh, why this is going to make coordination so much easier. Um, questions that you get uh, a lot of times about this technology, will WMAS replace narrowband? No. Um, WMAS, if, if, if it doesn't scale its bandwidth uh, to the needed number of audio channels, it's not spectrally efficient. So if you don't need a huge amount of channels, why would you take up a huge amount of space? Um, many applications just need a simple and cost-effective solution. So, um, you know, a lot of the things that you use wireless for only need a few channels. So why would you take up a huge amount of space for just a few channels? That's, that's again, not being spectrally efficient. Um, Narrowband systems uh, can also use small gaps in the frequency spectrum. Um, WMAS needs contiguous spectrum uh, to be available uh, for the required bandwidth of WMAS. And, and if there's not that, and there's just little slivers in there, then you can use a narrowband device. And again, you're more spectrally efficient. Okay. Um, other question is, is co-channel co-location operation possible with narrowband and WMAS? No. Um, you cannot operate those on top of each other. You still need spacing, just like all RF devices. You're going to need spacing between narrowband devices and WMAS, just like you do between narrowband and, and other narrowband devices. Um, if you're co-located in a TV channel, the performance of WMAS is going to decrease uh, when it's operating there within the, the narrowband device. So it's going to cut down on the amount of uh, performance you get based on having other things in there. Now, co-located mixed operation, you're still going to have to uh, plan your frequencies out. You're going to have to look at, OK, I have this many narrowband devices that I want to operate within this uh, and this WMAS device. I can have this many in there. So you have to coordinate all that to make sure that they all operate in the same way. Um, finally, uh, let's look at some key takeaways so you can kind of understand fully why this is important, why this technology is important. Um, WMAS is a technology neutral approach to multi-channel. Uh, anybody can use it. Um, I've showed you a few things that, that Shure is, is, thinks is important in, in implementing this, but anybody can use it. Uh, there's no one WMAS technology. It is a standard that defines how you transmit uh, and minimum performance parameters. Sure supports a scalable and spectrally efficient WMAS. It's very important to be able to scale that up or down based on needs and being able to use uh, narrowband devices, even analog devices, uh, along with WMAS uh, whenever you're doing a deployment. Uh, WMAS is regulated and allowed in the USA uh, and UK and Europe, um, and coming soon, Mexico, Canada, Australia, UAE, etc. What to expect from Sure WMAS systems in the future? Okay, Sure's influence on the regulations helped to deliver. Uh, the right benefits for this. Uh, sure worked really hard to make sure that the U.S. regulations fit in to help uh, the consumer, the end user, get exactly what they want out of WMAS devices. Uh, sure wants to make sure it's scalable and reliable. Um, you know, multi-channel can allow for big scalability. Um, and Sure wanted to make sure the regulations allow uh, higher power, uh, which means that it can minimize the amount of occupied spectrum to only what's needed. Uh, that way you can continue to use whatever devices you need and it scales up or down based on what you need. 
Being spectrally efficient is super important, as I've said many, many times and showed quite a few slides about. Um, being able to use uh, things like Axient Digital um, in, in being able to put those in a small amount of space is something that Shure has, has done for years. Um, with Shure's recommendations on the WMAS devices, the regulations require WMAS systems uh, to have an operational mode capable of at least three audio channels per megahertz to allow you to be able to use that spectrum efficiently and you know have the channel counts that you need. And again, versatile, uh, versatile and user-centric. It's important to make it easy for people to be able to use. Um, and they wanted, uh, you know, for all the unlicensed users out there, which is the majority of people uh, using wireless microphones, it allows for all users to use this technology. So a quick recap, why Shure WMAS? Higher channel counts with that Shure reliability, uh, easier deployment, scalable and responsible spectrum use, and again, supreme rack density. Thanks for watching, and if you have any other questions, reach out to your SoundPro account manager.